Well this is Turn Hill and really there's absolutely nothing left of the railway here. There's a few embankments as you approach Turn Hill but the station building and any station relics have all gone. Very sad. At this point let's have a refer to the map because I'm going to have to cheat a bit here and I'll show you why. We're just approaching Market Drayton and this is where the station was at Turnhill and you can see the track coming up and to this point here and in fact the A53 bypass of Market Drayton, just this one stretch here is actually on the old railway line. So I'm going to make an exception and actually drive on part of the line and then try and find the station up on the uh, far end of town. So here we are, we're actually on the, uh, the railway line now as we bypass Market Drayton. Well I've come over to the western side of Market Drayton and I'm standing in Morrison's car park and you can see the railway tunnel just as the trains approach the station. As I zoom in you can get a better view of the bridge. I can't actually get any closer because of the fence in front of me. So the trains came under the bridge and across and the station was just to the left of the Morrisons. In fact the station I believe was where the Travis Perkins building was in front of me now. What a great shame there's nothing left of the railway here. Most people wouldn't even know a railway ever existed here. The only giveaway of course is the railway bridge behind us, which most people don't even notice I'm sure. So here is the uh, the junction just to the northeast of Market Drayton Station, very significant point on the line. Through there, where the, where the cattle are, is the start of the North Staffordshire Railway to Stoke. And if, I, and if I pan round to the north, we've got the line of the road to Nantwich. And I've reached Adderley north of Market Drayton. And if I look south, there's the course of the railway. Very overgrown now. Similar story on, on the north side, but we can clearly see where the track bed was and where the line actually ran. Just ahead of this, about 100 yards, is the old Adderley Station. Adderley Station served a small rural community, but also a very busy Adderley Hall, which is about half a mile away. From this point we're going to push further north. We're now very close to the Shropshire-Cheshire border. Well, I've come just a little bit further down Adderley. Here on Station Road, there is no sign of the old station. Really sad. Well, I come about a mile and a half north of Adderley and there's trees you can see there in the distance is the Shropshire-Cheshire border and the railway came through that gap you can see under the bridge that I'm standing on now. I think it's characteristic of this part of Cheshire that we have the railway which is in total decay right next to a fantastically preserved canal system. It's pretty clear where the priorities were. Well I've reached Audlam which has the last station on the line before Nantwich there's been a certain amount of development in Audlam and it's difficult to tell where the railway was and very hard to find any evidence of the old station at all. Near to south of Audlam we have an old viaduct with the railway running on the top. There aren't many viaducts left on this line so it's great to find this one. Now I've come north of Audlam and I'm at the very northern end of the track. I'm looking south here so you can see clearly where the line used to run. If I pan round to the north, the track went ahead of me here through that hut there and if you look on the top right hand corner you can see the crew to Nantwich railway line and that's where this line joined on. Well, I've reached Nantwich and as you can see I'm on the uh, main crew to Shrewsbury railway line. Now I'm looking towards Nantwich, if I turn south we can see the line of the old railway coming up, coming up past them trees along here, along past those two huts and it joined the crew line just over there in the distance.
Well, I've reached Dantwich Station. And this, of course, is a line that runs from Crewe right down to Cardiff via Shrewsbury. There's a real twist to the story here in Crewe, and it's a very ironic twist. The clue is what I'm looking at now, the electrification. The electrification of this line was in the late 50s, early 60s, and it actually gave the Nantwich to Wellington line a state of execution, because while all this was being converted, it actually increased the traffic on the Wellington line. Of course, once the electric line was up and running properly, I'm afraid it was the end of the line literally for Wellington to Nantwich. It's a shame that the state of execution was so short, but that was typical in the 1960s, particularly the early 60s, out with the old and in with the new, with little regard for heritage and preservation. The Wellington to Nantwich line certainly pays testament to that. Manchester Piccadilly, platform 5, Winslow, Stockport, Manchester Piccadilly.